Republicans in the U.S. Senate blocked the advancement of a major voting rights bill on Tuesday, with 60 votes required to advance the bill for debate, and Republicans opposing the measure in the evenly split 100-member chamber, the bill stalled. Lindsey Graham, a prominent South Carolina Republican, called the measure an insane idea. In a statement released shortly after he voted no, he added, simply put, this is the biggest power grab in modern American history. Democrats plan to push for a revised version led by Senator Joe Manchin, a West Virginia Democratic centrist, who had announced his opposition to the legislation approved by the House of Representatives. His proposed changes include adding a national voter ID requirement and cutting a public campaign financing provision from the original version. But his changes to the measure have drawn no Republican support. The Democratic push for election reform comes as Republican-controlled re legislatures in many states are enacting new restrictions following the 2020 election that saw former President Donald Trump repeatedly make false claims of election fraud. The House Judiciary Committee will vote Wednesday on a package of six antitrust bills, including two that address the issue of giant companies such as Amazon and Google creating a platform for other businesses and then competing against those same businesses. The legislation drew fire Tuesday from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the largest U.S. business group. The group said the legislation will have dangerous consequences for America. It said antitrust laws should not be rigged against a small number of companies. In a separate development, the Federal Trade Commission has decided to review the company's planned purchase of U.S. movie studio MGM. This is according to a source familiar with the matter. The World Bank has announced a partnership with the African Union to finance the acquisition and distribution of COVID-19 vaccines for 400 million people in Africa. The announcement comes a day after African finance ministers and the World Bank Group met to fast-track vaccine acquisition on the continent and avoid a third wave of COVID-19. The project will be a big step toward helping the African Union meet its goal to vaccinate 60 percent of the continent's population by 2022. The World Bank has already approved operations to support vaccine rollouts in 36 countries, and by the end of June, the World Bank expects to be supporting vaccination efforts in 50 countries, two-thirds of which are in Africa. Fierce fighting continues to rage across Afghanistan, where officials reported Tuesday security forces had reversed some of the recent advances by the Taliban. Taliban insurgents have dramatically expanded their area of control since the foreign troop pullout process formally started on May the 1st, overrunning about 60 districts and inflicting heavy casualties on U.S.-trained Afghan security forces. The insurgent gains have fueled fears that a Taliban return to power is inevitable after all international soldiers leave Afghanistan by a September 11th deadline. Afghan authorities said Tuesday government security forces evicted the Taliban from several districts in northern and northeastern provinces of Balkh, Baglan and Kunduz during overnight fighting, killing dozens of insurgents, a Taliban spokesman rejected those claims as propaganda. It was not possible to seek independent verification of either of the statements. Both sides often issue inflated claims about their battlefield activities. A special committee with the United Nations Cultural Agency, UNESCO, says Australia's Great Barrier Reef should be placed on a list of World Heritage Sites designated as in danger. The World Heritage Committee recommended the placement because of climate change deterioration to the enormous coral reef system in Australia's Coral Sea. The Great Barrier Reef is the world's biggest coral reef system. Climate change has driven temperatures in the Coral Sea higher in recent decades, prompting the Australian government to downgrade the reef's long-term outlook to very poor. And the head of the World Food Program, David Beasley, said Tuesday that more than a million people in southern Madagascar are approaching starvation. He said some 14,000 are already in famine-like conditions. Beasley spoke to a small group of reporters about the conditions he saw during his trip last week to the East African nation.
Hi, thank you for watching. I hope the videos are useful for you. Please subscribe to my channel using the button below.